So the next thing that we need to do, <clears throat> we've got our drum here. This is going to be the lower drum that the actual gas fire fire tube sits inside. Of. Now, because we're running an 18 inch fire tube, uh, we're going to shorten this barrel down as far as we can while still leaving room underneath for all of our char that once it slips off the grate will be sitting down in here and that's what we'll be cleaning out. But we need to shorten the drum up so that our overall height of the system is as short as possible for the lower drum. That gives us more room for hopper capacity and we get better mileage out of the truck. Uh, or at least better mileage per hopper. And because this one's going on my V10 full size truck, this is going to have a significantly taller hopper than my little Toyota that's sitting outside. So to shorten this drum up, we know, thanks to Wayne Keith and building all the gas fires he already has, with an 18 inch fire tube, we know that we need to take 8 inches of height out of this drum. And the easiest way to do that is to take advantage of the corrugations or ribs on the barrel, which is what actually gives it its strength. So we're going to take and cut just where the barrel starts to flare out. And that, if we cut it correctly in that flare, when you go to set the cut half down on the bottom, it's going to sit square almost no matter what because it's got a taper that will self-center. Now, we're gonna use the corrugation, but not the one I'm pointing at. We're gonna use the one back here. Pulling eight inches out of it, I'm gonna cut about a third of the way up the flare and then we're going to take and rip eight inches off of this section right here and then we can shorten the barrel down and put it back together. So I'm going to get to cutting on this. inch rip taken out of the barrel we're addressed up the inside of this right here I got it sitting up on the saw horses nice easy working height here's the bottom that we took the eight inches off of got it cleaned up it should drop right in there. now 55 gallon drum from uh, bottom edge to the underside of this lip is 33 inches so we took eight inches out, so our drum should total out to be 25 inches tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift where I need to, because this drum is a little bit beat up, so this kind of slides in a little bit easier than it should. I'm gonna get this set up to 25, put a tack on it, come over to the other side, repeat, make sure I'm square all the way around. And then since we ripped it right on the edge of that bevel where the rib rises up, We've got a lip right here that we can fill in with our weld. So I'm going to go ahead and get this squared up, tacked up, bolt it in place. Like I said, this barrel uh, was not the best of shape, but it was the best one I had for the lower drum. Uh, and it was sliding down in there a little bit easy, so I took some time off camera to get it squared up and tacked in place. Now I got a couple good tacks all the way around. It's as square as it's gonna be, uh, which I'm within an eighth of an inch, which is fine for what I'm doing. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna have to do 
is over here where this barrel has got some bend in it. I'm gonna massage this back and uh, get it all drawn up as close as I can. And I'll go ahead and start fully welding all the way around it. I'll bring you guys back when I actually start welding because this is gonna be some finicking here. I got some decent gaps over here with this piece of the drum is bent. But it's kind of the nature of things when you're running with uh, light duty sheet metal. It distorts really easily. Um, I mean, I bought these barrels obviously used. They're not in the best shape, but I'm repurposing them, giving them a new life, and uh, they're gonna serve my purpose really well. So I'll get to that now. I think the most skilled welder will have an issue welding these barrels back together. How thin the material is, trying to control your heat really well, especially if you're running a uh, Miller 252 with 035. Really got to be careful with your heat. You'll pop through these things real easy. Um, just clean your surfaces real good, take your time. You're gonna end up water testing this anyways because this does have to be completely airtight. We're gonna have produced gas in the bottom here. If any oxygen leaks in here, it can be a really bad day. Um, so yeah, just, just take your time, go slow. If you got a machine that runs smaller wire, 023 would be awesome for doing this. But like I said, either way, it's gonna get water tested. We will make sure one way or another, it will be airtight. Um, now a lot of guys will put their ammo box clean out on before they weld the bottom together. I'm not going to do that this time because I'm changing how I'm mounting my ammo box and I've also got a lot of other modifications that are going to be done to this drum um, before it's you know finished and ready to install, you know, put the fire tube on and everything else. So yeah, now I need to start test spinning it on the truck. Um, Traditionally, with Wayne's design, you would be cutting a channel in it right here, and it's gonna sit over the top of the frame. I'm changing how I'm doing that this time. Uh, just different platform of truck, different way I'm gonna mount it. Uh, taking a lot of inspiration with this build will be from Jake North um, and his V8 Dodge Dakota. And Bob, uh, he's got a modified V8 Dodge Dakota on wood and both of them, I'm kind of taking some ideas from their build and putting them onto mine and changing it around a little bit here and there. So it's it's not going to be, uh, from this point forward, a traditional Wayne Keith gas fire. There will be some modifications that are done to it. But these are modifications that have been done by other people and proven that they work. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing filled up with water, make sure this weld is good, and then I'm going to start test feeding on the truck, see what, what else I need to do to position this on the truck where I want it to sit. Thank <laughs> you. 
there's still a little couple skip welds right here, but I think I can probably get those to crack off of there. Kind of nice having a complete truck to do all your mock up on because you can use a torch for half of this stuff. It doesn't matter if it's ugly because you're not using that chassis. more substantial it needs a little extra persuasion So I got some rigging set up here. I got a couple pieces of uh, scrap angle iron and I have a clamp down to the frame. Um, I will be building a custom one-off flatbed for this truck. And the way I'm setting this up, most single wheel beds are seven feet wide. So I used these pieces of angle and clamped them down to the frame and marked off from the center of the frame, three and a half feet. That'll be the widest point of my bed. I'll be using two inch box tubing right here. So I made a mark two inches back. So this line would represent the inside edge of my bed frame. And I'm planning on sticking gas fire right here. So now I can measure off the frame. Looks like I've got 21 inches from frame to the inside of my frame. I want the bottom barrel to sit back off of the frame quarter of an inch uh, so that leaves me uh, 20 and three quarter to work with and our barrel is 23 and a half so I'm gonna do some quick math in my head which I don't do well on camera I'll know how much I need to take out the side of this barrel to make it sit up against the frame and clear the flatbed mount once I have that figured out I'll mark it out on the barrel cut it off plate that in and then start working on mounting the heat exchanger. So I took the bottom barrel, flipped it upside down, I laid a 2x4 across the jack and lifted the jack up until I was sitting just underneath of my string line while I was tight to the frame rail. Then I went straight down and traced where the string line was. So this would represent if the barrel was completely tight to the frame rail over there. I don't want it tight to the frame, so I left about a three-eighths of an inch gap and scribed the line across the back. Squared down both sides, and my frame is nine and a half inches tall, and once again, I don't want it laying right on the frame, so I measured down nine and three quarters and slid a line across there. So that's the window that I'm gonna cut out of the bottom barrel so that when it's flipped over, it will lay up right up against the frame quarter of an inch of clearance in both directions and a quarter of an inch clearance to the bed rail that will be out here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out a little bit small. I'm going to use a flat wheel so I do it nice and accurately and then we'll test fit it onto the truck. first test fit see how it sets up against the frame rail so there's a good look of how I plan to have it notched over top of the frame rail so it's right over top of the frame and that'll all obviously get boxed in now I have it set tight to the frame rail right now you remember I wanted a quarter inch off of the frame and I wanted it a quarter of an inch off of the string representing our bed see how we did on our first cut a 
looks like exactly half an inch to me so now that can get plated in make sure when i weld it it's going to be welded on the inside so that i don't extend the barrel out any at all now until i build the bed frame i won't know fore and aft exactly where the gas fire needs to sit because i need two inches between the cab and um, the bed rail actually one inch in between the cab and the bed rail then two inches back will be the back edge of the bed rail then i want a quarter of an inch of clearance to fit the gas fire so i have the same quarter inch all the way around so the bottom barrel is not touching anything and i have plenty of room that i can move it back i've got probably close to an inch there before i get close to the spring hanger and i'm pretty sure i have it pretty close to exactly where it's going to sit width wise here and if i need to move the bed a little bit more forward I, i'll take it all the way down to three quarters of an inch gap that's totally fine with me but that's a pretty darn good fit and for running a seven foot wide flatbed the gas fire itself will be almost the exact width as the uh, widest portion of the body itself so i'm not going to have anything sticking out the side of the truck and the way I set it up, I went uh, nine and three quarter inches of my height cut there. That puts the bottom of my barrel at the exact height of the frame, which is also the exact height of the pinch weld. So there's nothing hanging down under the truck any, uh, any further down than anything stock. That's where the pinch weld on the cab and the bed was, and that's where the frame is. So I'm not losing anything but instead of channeling it over the top of the frame rail like a traditional Wayne Keith like I did in the Toyota that means I got to take that barrel and sink it down almost six inches further than on my other truck which means more hopper capacity and for the V10 I plan on doing a lot of towing with it and uh, long distance driving the more hopper capacity the better now hopefully I don't have bridging problems when I get to that, but uh, the last, the Wilbur Smith build, I think had a 26 and a half inch tall hopper. I haven't measured to see exactly how much I'm gonna get, but I know I'm gonna be pretty close to that, if not a little bit more, and there was no bridging problems in that hopper. So I think this is gonna work out pretty good. So I'm gonna go find some material I can get that boxed in, and then uh, figure out where I'm going from there. Cause there needs to be a heat exchanger hanging off of that side right there.